Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Jack. Thanks for joining me on this video. In my day-to-day -day job in the pain clinic, I see people from all walks of life and all with different levels of happiness, especially lately given all that is going on in the world with wars, hyperinflation, supply chain issues, viruses, and the list goes on. I did a video a while back that was one of my favorite videos to make, but uh, no one really watched it. <laughs> and that was about my research on the power of a smile and how it affects so many aspects of life. A simple smile has profound implications on those around you. And in that video, I talked about mirror neurons and I mentioned these happiness hormones. Well, in this video, it will be a much deeper dive on these hormones. And I hope to answer the question of, can we hack our happiness? Meaning, how do we elevate how we feel on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, to answer that question, we first have to understand what gives us the sensation of happiness. And in this video, we'll answer all of these questions. So if this interests you, then come along and let's get started. There are four main happiness hormones or neurotransmitters. If you're able to raise your levels of these hormones, you will elevate your mood, emotions, and even your cognitive function. They allow us to feel happiness, pleasure, and love. However, these hormones are influenced by many factors, things like your exercise regimen, what you eat, your environment, relationships, and even your gut biome or the good bacteria in your gut have a heavy influence on the levels of these hormones. We've talked about the gut biome or microbiome in several videos before and the important role it plays with hormones like dopamine and serotonin. A happy gut leads to a happy mind through this gut and central nervous system pathway. So let's start with dopamine. It is associated with motivation and reward and it oftentimes is referred to as the feel-good hormone. It is a reward system of your brain that keeps you coming back for more, and the levels will increase in anticipation of pleasurable things like food or sex. It's also high when you set a goal in life that gets you excited. When you hit that goal, you feel happiness. That is dopamine doing its magic. For example, when you work towards something with the expectation of reward in the end, this makes you happy and it releases a burst of energy to obtain whatever goal you're trying to achieve. If your dopamine levels are low, then you can actually go into depression. In addition to depression, if you are low in dopamine, you would lose interest in activities that once brought you joy and you would not be motivated to do many things. And dopamine doesn't just affect your feelings, it is involved in motor control, cognitive function, your memory, attention span, decision-making, impulsivity, as well as the maternal and reproductive behaviors. One interesting fact is that nearly 50% of your body's dopamine is actually made in the gut. There has been quite a bit of research on how Parkinson's and other neurodegenerative diseases tie into the microbiome. So consider the saying, you are what you eat. Well, that is true on so many levels, but how you feel is based largely on what you eat as well. If you choose to eat a very poor diet, one filled with processed and refined carbohydrates with lots of sweets and other inflammatory foods, which a Western diet is notorious for, then this will affect many things in your body, including your gut biome, which over time leads to things like depression and anxiety. And by the way, feel free to check out my previous video where I discuss all of this. The suggestion is to consume about 20% protein. The rest should be whole foods rich in fiber that are mainly plant-based. Protein is important because amino acids like tyrosine and phenylalanine are important in dopamine production. The Mediterranean diet is typically one of the best diets to obtain these goals. And if you want to know why, then check out a video I did comparing the keto diet to the Mediterranean diet. So in summary, a well-balanced, healthy diet is one way to boost dopamine levels. Realize that things like sugar, recreational drugs, caffeine can all increase your dopamine levels. However, obviously this is not the preferred way to go about things as a downstream effects on your health will be significant. A more natural path to increasing dopamine levels is to set a new goal that really gets you excited and that you want to accomplish. And every day, take small steps towards achieving that goal. The larger the goal, the more it should be broken down into smaller steps. And before you know it, you would have accomplished what seemed insurmountable initially. And along the way, your brain will be releasing dopamine with each smaller step accomplished, eventually leading to a dopamine habit. And one last word on dopamine is to make sure you have the appropriate levels of vitamins and minerals that create dopamine. Things like iron, folate, vitamin B6, and niacin are important in this process. So talk to your doctor and get these levels checked if you suspect that they may be low. 
Next, let's talk about serotonin, otherwise known as the happiness hormone. It is a hormone that has a crucial role in not only your mood and gives you a sense of well-being, but it also has regulatory functions, things like sleep, digestion, brain function, your circadian rhythm, mood, learning, memory, and your bone health are all affected by serotonin. It helps regulate anxiety and keeps you from feeling depressed as well. 90% of serotonin is made in the gut. The trillions of good bacteria in your gut actually stimulate cells to make serotonin. Tryptophan, which is notorious for that turkey-induced coma on Thanksgiving, is an essential amino acid that you have to get from your diet. It is a precursor that your gut converts into serotonin. So now let's go beyond our diet and ask ourselves, is it also possible to increase our levels of serotonin beyond our diet? It is important to be involved in activities that build confidence as confidence raises serotonin levels. Low self-esteem is a big deal because it lowers these levels. So it is important to focus on your wins in life. If we focus on every loss, then it will drag your serotonin down with your sense of self-worth. Part of this boils down to our mindset. You can be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company and if you focus only on your losses and not the amazing achievements, this can lead to extreme unhappiness even though by many standards you are considered quite successful, at least professionally. It's like when you take a test in school, out of 100 questions you perhaps get 5 of them wrong. Some people will be really happy that they got 95 out of 100 questions right. However, some people will focus on the 5 they got wrong and it's fine to have that thought process if it is to learn from your mistakes but if it becomes a habitual pattern then it can lead to too much negativity and stress leading to a decrease in these feel-good hormones. You can also build confidence in other ways as well by doing anything that puts you out of your comfort zone and challenges you in different ways. Something as simple as an exercise regimen can help you do this by setting a new goal weekly for say how many push-ups you can do and actively working towards such a goal can help build confidence over time. Studies have also shown that just getting into the sunlight can increase your serotonin levels while boosting your endorphins as well. Then there's oxytocin, or otherwise known as the love hormone. It gets its alias because it is associated with how you trust, love, or bond with other people. Therefore, certain pleasurable activities such as hugging, cuddling, kissing, or having sex will cause your brain to have a burst of oxytocin. It's also essential for things like childbirth, breastfeeding, and that strong parent-child bond that develops over time. People with pets are known to release oxytocin when you say hug or pet your dog. I won't make any more cat jokes here as I did that in one video and man, people just can't take a joke anymore these days. I can't imagine what it's like to be a comedian these days. Oh wait, maybe I can't. Anyhow, in the world of anesthesiology, oxytocin and its effects are important as well. Oxytocin is released during childbirth as it causes the uterus to contract and deliver the baby. After delivery, your anesthesia team will give something called pitocin, which is essentially a synthetic drug that mimics one of oxytocin's primary actions, which is contraction of the uterus. It's important because after the baby and placenta is delivered, you don't want a floppy uterus as it will cause significant bleeding that could become life-threatening. Therefore, by giving pitocin, the uterus contracts down and in turn constricts all the blood vessels, making the uterus hard as a rock and controlling the bleeding. It's actually pretty amazing. Uh, you can see and feel the uterus harden up and contract into what feels like a rock right before your eyes. So how do you boost oxytocin? Well, you have to get your freak on. <laughs> just kidding, but not really, as it is one of the ways to increase levels. You just need some intimacy in some way, shape, or form. You don't necessarily need physical contact, and at times, even if you engage in physical contact, you may not release oxytocin. For example, if you're forced to give someone a hug for no reason, then oxytocin is not released. You see, social trust is what triggers oxytocin. By simply receiving or delivering love or warmth to others, one can cause oxytocin release. Oxytocin levels increase in response to touch and even the right kind of eye contact. It also gets released when we are stressed to counteract the effects of cortisol, which is a stress hormone that I talk a lot on this channel about, mainly in how it pertains to uncontrolled weight gain in my weight loss suggestions playlist. More recently, scientists have discovered that oxytocin plays a wider role in things like our immune system, our ability to heal, maintain good muscle health, and even how we perceive pain. And the gut microbiome plays a role here as well. It was found in a study that the probiotic l rituri increase the body's oxytocin levels, helping with wound healing. And finally, we have endorphins, which many people associate with exercise or otherwise known as the runner's high. It can also increase due to any type of rewarding activity. 
being a pain doctor, I'm all about the endorphins as it is your body's natural painkillers. They actually bind to the same opiate receptors that painkillers like morphine bind to. It minimizes pain, maximizes pleasure, and creates a sense of relaxation. You can raise endorphin levels much like the other hormones discuss, and that is through simple things like laughter, exercising, meditating, eating dark chocolate, or simply watching your favorite show on TV. You can also increase it by damaging your body to an extent. Causing some moderate wear and tear in your body through things like exercise or stretching will cause endorphin release. Pain stimulates endorphin release too, but this is obviously not a suggested manner to stimulate higher levels of endorphin. Spicy food reportedly may trigger endorphin release as well. So this is a lot to memorize on all of these hormones and how to increase their levels. Just remember that one of the best ways to increase all these hormones is the old adage of eat, drink, and be merry. Eat well, stay hydrated, moderate alcohol usage, hang out with friends and family, and exercise. And we exercise, exercise with friends out in the sun for longer than 30 minutes at a time to maximize benefits by increasing your body's vitamin D at the same time. And afterwards, go to a juice bar or something and invite your friends over for dinner with music in the background to lift your mood and socialize with your friends as laughter is the best medicine. And be sure to pet your furry animal as well. <laughs> then end the day with meditation as it has been shown to increase dopamine levels and endorphins as well. Then you can follow all of that up with a date night with your special someone and end it with some Barry Manilow music <laughs> and a glass of red wine for some resveratrol. And we all know where all that leads to. That's right, oxytocin release. And then be sure and get a good night's rest as it is important to managing stress and allowing the body and mind to heal. Set aside seven to nine hours so that you can restore the balance of your hormones. CBD, which many of you know I'm a big fan of, has been shown to help with rest. Other things like no caffeine before bed, going to bed at the same time every night, and using the bedroom for only sex and sleep will all help you get that all important restful sleep at night. So I hope you've learned something about these happiness hormones and how you can increase them in a healthy way. Just remember life is short, so we might as well be as happy as we can as we go through the vast majority of it. So till the next video, take the time to learn something new because when you stop learning, you stop growing. Take care, Pura Vida.